need a microphone. David don't. He doesn't. <laughs> Good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening. It's a great pleasure to be here. It's uh, truly an honor. Uh, by the way, I'm the vice president, not the president of the Spiritist Federation of Florida. <laughs> I'm downgrading. <laughs> yeah, there's someone, someone much better than me at this moment. But it's a, it, it is a great pleasure to be here. And uh, I, well, I was very happy and pleased to hear David speaking because he's very eloquent, very, you know, looks like a, a preacher from the past coming in a spiritist environmental, reincarnating and trying to, to transform and to, to deliver. <laughs> Oops. Okay. To deliver a good message to all of us and I'm the topic that was selected so I can we can share and uh, discuss a little bit it's it's very simple and forgive my my not so eloquent way to say things and uh, now we are going to say about small things and small act, acts that we can do in our daily lives when a little bit goes a long way I put charity, but charity, we have like many forms to, to do some, to do charity. But a little bit, and actually we're going to focus in, in that small things that we all can do. Uh, it's something that touches our heart when we see examples left and right, from north to south, east to west, transforming people's lives. One story that I'm about to tell, it's a very well-known story by all of you guys, and probably you've heard this before, but any time that we hear again, it touches our hearts and make us feel how we can transform and impact other people's life. And I am going to read, because it's a... I put here in this little I, small iPad. It's Howard Atwood Kelly. I don't know if you guys heard about this gentleman. He was born in the 19th century. One day, this little boy, a poor boy, so very poor back then, back then, was selling goods from door to door to pay his way to school found that he had only one small dime in his pocket and he was very hungry and very disencouraged by everything that he was doing. It was like making, taking consideration and maybe to stop what he was doing and maybe uh, all that sacrifice was not worth it to, to do what he has in mind. His objective it was to go to the medic, medis, medical school but well, but he decided to he decided to knock in the next door. Someone it was a very nice uh, uh, neighborhood. He says like, well, actually, I'm gonna knock on somebody's somebody else's door. I'm gonna ask for a, a plate of food or something to eat because I am very hungry. I have this dime. If I receive a no, I am going to quit. So he decided to to ask for a meal. However, he lost his nerve when the lovely young lady opens the door. Instead of a meal, he asked for a drink of a glass of water. He asked, oh, please, was a very beautiful woman. Instead of asking for a plate of food, he says, like, no, just a glass of water. She thought he looked hungry, so brought him a large glass of milk. He drank it slowly and then asked, how much do I owe you? You don't owe me anything, that's what the lady replied. Mother has taught us never to accept pay for kindness. He said, then I thank you from my heart. As Howard Kelly left that house, 
He not only felt stronger physically, but his faith in God and humanity was much stronger. He had been ready to get ready to give up and quit at that moment, and he changed he changed completely his mind. Years later, that young woman became critically ill. The local doctors were like a little hopeless because it was a very uh, difficult disease. There's no like way to cure and to treat her in that little city, in that small town. And they finally decided to send her out to a bigger city where they have like more, uh, more resources to, to treat her out, to treat her. So then finally sent them, sent her to the big city where they call in specialists to study her very rare disease. And Dr. Howard Kelly, now graduated, was called in for the consultation. When he heard the name of the town that she came from, a strange light filled his eyes. Immediately he rose, he stand up, went down to the hall of the hospital, directly to her room. Dressed in his doctor gown, he went in to see her. He recognized her at once. He went back to the consultation room determined to do his best to save her life. From that day, he gave special attention to that specific case. After a long struggle, the battle was won. Thank God, he was very happy. And Dr. Kelly requested the business office, the treasury, the department, the treasury department of the, the hospital to pass the final bill to him for the approval. He looked at it, then wrote something on the edge and the bill was sent to her room. She feared to open it, for she was sure it would take the rest of her life to pay for it all. Finally, she looked and something caught her attention on the side of the bill. She began to read the following words, paid in full with a glass of milk long ago. The interesting thing, we never know when a small act can make so much impact in somebody else's life. And most curious, is, is, most curious is that gentleman was one of the fourth founding people that actually uh, uh, institute found the John Hopkins Hospital was one of the most important uh, institutes of research in United States and in the whole world probably and that is very interesting because that little boy was about to quit and he encountered in that specific day a message of hope simply by giving by receiving a glass of milk so we can think about like how many times chances like that crosses our lives small acts of kindness, small acts of goodness, sometimes with thoughts and willing to transform other people's lives. And we simply give it away. We don't take the advantage to be immersed in this infinite amount of love that is surrounding us in a way that we don't understand yet. But it's there, it's here, it's inside of us. David mentioned that the conscience, the God's law is written inside of our conscience, question 621, if I'm not mistaken. It means that each one of us has this potential, the potentiality to transform ourselves and to become someone much better. It doesn't matter what kind of religion that we profess. It means we are a good, good human being. And by the fruits, they will recognize what kind of tree is providing that specific fruits. And one day they will ask, what kind of religion, what kind of faith that you profess? I am a spiritist, a spiritist, and I am inviting you maybe to take a look. It might make a difference. It probably will do a difference in your life as it did for me. Because we understand that everything is in chain. Everything is like 
connected, interconnected, and we can make a lot of difference in somebody else's lives, some people's lives. So do good, feel good. And we, we select like a few, uh, uh, this little slide, recent research confirmed that doing good could very well be the key to happiness. And we go further as helping others, helping yourselves. It means when you help someone, you're actually receiving, not only giving. Is it in giving that you receive? Is it in forgiving that we are forgiven? And this exchange of energy, it makes the world much better, initiating with ourselves. So different research shows that people who give of themselves sometimes time. We all have time, a little bit. I know nowadays it's difficult to have time. Donating money, disinterested, because sometimes we give it up, we donate money, because we want to look good in our tax returns. And of course, we deduct from the eye, on, uh, on the eyes of the IRS. But when this, this donation is doing like it very disinterested, we can make a tremendous impact in somebody else's lives. In helping others, this is very broad, and I know, have greater chance of being happy and feeling fulfilled with their own lives, decreasing any chance of suffering from depression. And let's go on on these slides. Doing good makes you feel good. And we see in one research of Dr. Carolyn Schwartz that she was very worried about her, uh, her patients, about the welf uh, welfare of her uh, multiple sclerosis patients, and wished to understand that she could do in order to improve their lives. She embarked on a research that involved her own MS patients reaching out to others MS patients to offer support. But the results was outstanding because it was amazing. And she was like, oh my God, while those who were receiving support from her MS patients seemed to benefit greatly, she noticed that her own patients were benefiting much more in giving than those who were receiving support. What does he mean? It's food for thought. It's really food for thought. So doing good makes you feel good. Again, the same title of the slide. And you will see the scientists and more science. I am putting this slide with a little uh, animation but you can Google it and you can go to the medical journals and you will see a tremendous amount of research. The, 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 the hormones, they are being released in our brains, in our systems, when we do something that actually reward us in a way that it's much, much better to them to receive a beautiful new car or buying something fantastic especially for the woman's a nice shoes. <laughs> I see that nice shoes for women, it transforms their lives in a way, at least for a couple of days, right? Forgive me if it's not, like I know, but we have like many things that fulfill us, but it lasts a very small, it's a very short time in our lives. But this kind of act, doing good to others, it fulfills our lives. And sometimes very small acts can make a big transformation in our lives. So the release of dopamine, serotonin, part of the pronunciation, and many other own hormones can make us like feel happy and transform our lives little by little. And more and more, just like running. I see people that are very addicted to working out, workout. Sometimes people that run, oh, I can, I have to run because I'm addicted to this. So there's like a kind of all hormones that are being released into the body and make us feel like I want more. Doing good actually make this transformation. Maybe, I know I'm certain in a very, much more profound way. So researchers, I am putting here a few names, but as I said before, you can do this research all over and you will see the results 
and you will see uh, uh, you will see um, researchers and the result of these researchers they're very amazing so researchers have long known that altruism such as volunteering at a hospital raises levels of dopamine a few good brain chemical that shields the body from stress hormones. What's interesting is that no selfless act is too small, says clinical therapist Serena Wadwa, director of the Triquel, Triquel Living Center in Chicago. And she has a very interesting uh, uh, program. To sustain a helper's height, a helper's I aim to perform a simple act of kindness every day. Small things, small steps. Because sometimes we want to change the world. We want to transform everybody's people's life. Forgetting that we have to transform first our life. Let's be the source of all these kindness. kindness little by little one step at a time. Easy examples include bridging the mail to an elderly neighbor. This is a very simple example that we brought you over here. Surprising a co-worker with a cup of coffee. We're slowing your car on a busy street to let another driver turn. Better homes and garden December 2011 this is the source that we brought. Mm -hmm. So why doing good works wonder? Why do some scientists feel that we are programmed to respond positively in, requ in regards to being kind? We are meant to be and to live together. We are meant to live in society. God is so wise and everything in this plan is so amazing because the great almighty put us to live together so we can exchange experiences. And if we have things to amend, unfinished business, that we have to get along with others. And we are going to know more and more how to tolerate, how not to point fingers. Because we all have vices, we have problems. This is just a fraction of a time. We will cross eternity with our immortality. So it means we have a lot of time. The clock of eternity will lead us and do show us in a new horizon that will bring us the conscience that this is just a moment, that we have to live in full force and to transform our lives and do to others what we would like to receive to ourselves. And this is so amazing because it doesn't matter where you are insert in what kind of environment you are, the color of your skin, your race, your culture, the politics that you like, if you're a Democrat, if you're a Republican, we all can be somebody else much, much bigger than what we are at this moment. And let's start, let's begin with the first step. Why doing good works wonder, wonders? Love summarizes Jesus' doctrine in its entirety because it is the sentiment for excellence. And sentiments are insti instincts raised to the high of the degree of progress accomplished. Gospel according to Spiritism is the source that we brought. In charity without ostentations, this is another slide that we brought here, and we are, now we are going to explain something else. Besides material charity, it portrays more charity. It spares the susceptibility, the su susceptibility of its beneficiaries and enables them to accept the benefit without bruising their self-esteem and it safeguards their, their human dignity because they will accept a service but not a handout. Even though we have to be cautious and to see how we are going to do this small act. Sometimes we try because our pride and we want to be like the best 
collaborators of some kind of institution and we want to be seen sometimes, we do this kind of charity in a very ostentatious way and we want to be seen, we want to be recognized by others as if the reward of being is going to be gained in this realm of life. I remember Mother, Mother Teresa of Calcutta and she says like, well, at the end, it's between us and God. It's not because we are doing this to, for others to see. We have to pay attention because sometimes the ones that are receiving this benefit are becoming so position, the exposition that is being put on. And we have also in the Gospel according to Spiritism, one very beautiful passage was the hidden misfortune. And it shows a, a, a small la a, a lady, he, she was very rich, she was very uh, beautiful. And you will, will see a reference at this, for the same lady on Heaven and Hell book, on the testimony of the happy spirits, a mention that Kardec brought, a, con a condesa, I don't know how to say condesa in English. David can help me out. She was a noble woman <laughs> from the royalty. Countess. Uh, huh? Countess. Countess. Countess, right, that's right. She was a countess. And she was a noble woman. She is beautiful. She was beautiful. She was rich. And we sometimes think, oh my God, beautiful people, rich people, they don't, they're not so humble. They're not very humble. They are thinking something else instead of doing charity. But this, this woman that brings her daughter to do the charity, trying to identify where poverty was living, we will see in this hidden misfortunes a true example of a spirit that, did not, that she did, didn't see the religion of her beneficiaries. She didn't see the color of the skins. Because in the first paragraph, on the second paragraph, if I'm not mistaken, she says like, well, she takes her daughter to the outskirts of the city, in the very poor village places that she already know, with a, a, a tremendous amount of food and resources so she can help their, uh, 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 she can be the benefactor of many, many people living in poverty in such a, Humiliating, humiliating situation and she was dressing up in a very nice way but not ostentatious not very like fancy for example if you go to the slums and wearing like a Prada Chanel all the nice outfit it will bring like and cause like a tremendous impact in other people's lives she was like dressed simple Elegant, very simple, accordingly with the task that she was meant to do. And she went at the same time teaching her daughter to do exactly that. At the end, she went to her house, and by the end of this chapter, which is beautiful, I truly recommend, I, I very recommend you guys to read this Hidden Misfortunes. And you will see the beauty of this woman. And when you go and you jump to the heaven and hell, the second part, the testimony of this, this Countess, Countess Paula, that's her name. I forgot, but now I, I remember. Countess Paula, it doesn't mean that this woman is the same spirit, but Kardec suggests there might be the same spirit. It doesn't matter if it's the same, if it is, if she is the same spirit or not. It means how beautiful, how happy the spirit, because she passed away, she disincarnated when she was 36, and no one understand. In one of the, the on her grave, people like going there, says like, how come this beautiful woman with money, with fortune, with beautiful features, with a huge heart, with tremendous amount of love, pass, leave the face of the earth? And we will see the description by her 
when she, actually when she described the, the the when she arrived at the other realm of life telling that she was a very happy spirit and it's worth reading the end because she mentioned that she uh, asked for all the tests all the reincarnations being poor being miserable trying to forge her spirit in a way so she can ask at last for the proof of being rich because it's very slippery it's very difficult sometimes we ask for this proof i want to be beautiful i want to be rich and asking at the other realm of life no trust me i'm going to do all the best when i'm going to be on the face of the earth and we when we are ring Incarnating again, we messed up most of the times. But she was a very successful lady doing all of this. That's a painting of her. How can we practice charity? Sometimes through prayer, through thoughts, words, and actions. Small things doesn't cost much, doesn't cost nothing, anything. I want you to understand was the protector spirit. Uh, if you can find this at the Gospel according to Spiritism, I want you to understand fully that moral charity entails the type that everyone can exhibit, in which costs nothing materially, but which is nonetheless very difficult to put into practice moral charity consists in giving support to one another and it is what you practice the least to pray on behalf of others it's such a important thing to do and most of the times we simply don't do it and it costs nothing simply goodwill a will to donate something, good energies, vibrating towards others, and wishing the other person can overcome their own obstacles with hope and love. We have like here more in material charity. I have here one of the statements from the gospel. Charity is the fundamental virtue that must uphold the entire edifice of earthly virtues. Without charity, none of the others exist. Without charity, there is no hope for a better future, no more interest to guide us. Without charity, there is no faith, for faith is nothing more than a pure ray of light that makes a charitable soul shine. Charitable is the eternal anchor of salvation on all worlds it is the purest emanation of the Creator Himself. It is His home for it. it is His own virtue that He gives to His creature. And go ahead, more. Let's go further. This passage is very famous, and most of us already know, but it's also important because the widow's might on Gospel according to Spiritism in chapter 13. It shows a true example of someone, this widow, that has nothing to give, very little. And she was giving from what is about to miss to her life. And Jesus made the differentiation between the ones you're giving in that uh, 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 offertory box, giving with what is the result of their abundance, what is actually doesn't make any difference for them. It's easy to donate when we have a lot. It doesn't cost more, much. But when we see like people like this, like this widow, giving what he's actually was about to make a difference in her life in the future. And Jesus has this ability to perceive and to see what is going on inside of our hearts. And we will see the differentiation between one action and the other. It seems the same. We're getting, putting our hands inside of our pockets and putting the money inside that offertory box. It seems exactly the same. And most of the time, what we do is we clap, we applause.
people that donates a lot of money, which is very important. We know this is, is very important. Sometimes rich people donate to build like hospitals, universities, spirit centers, and things like that, which is fantastic. And we, and God actually likes this. The, the, the good spirits are very happy for this. But sometimes we see small acts just like this widow that has an impact much more profound because it talks, because it reveals the heart of someone that no one can see except the Creator and the Good Spirits. And that's why, going back to Mother Teresa, what at the ends, what matters, it's what happens between your heart, you and the Creator. We don't need to show off to anyone. We know our hearts. Sometimes I see people with big hearts, good intentions, giving a lot of money, which is very nice. And sometimes they do this with the same intention of the widow's might. But we see also very rich people doing this with second intentions. So let's put which one weight more. Andrea's idea, you know, all these special effects. <laughs> so it's a lot with negligence, a little with goodwill. Summarizing here. But sometimes, sometimes, we have to do a careful examination <coughs> inside of our hearts because it got to be sometimes a little piece of pride, pride, so we want to be noticed. It's a British accent. Have you noticed? <laughs> Sorry. No. Maybe previous incarnation. Who knows? So we want to be noticed. We want to be put on top of a pedestal. Oh, that guy is fantastic. And we see millionaires left and right with big portraits, big paintings. And I'm not judging them. Of course, forgive me if it seems that I'm judging. I'm just trying to pass that we all can do this examination inside. Because I also see people with very little resources. That they also have a tremendous amount of pride inside of their hearts. So only us can do this examination and notice what is taking place at that specific moment. See what time we have. We have how many minutes? So this, this is something that has to be analyzed. Something that has to be carefully analyzed. The last slide, it's about the moral person. It's on question 918, and it's worth reading. Because when Allan Kardec asks, ask the spirits, by what signs can we recognize in individuals the real progress that will raise their spirit within the spirit hierarchy? The spirit proves its progress when all the actions of its corporeal life consists in practicing the law of God. And when it, it understands the spirit life... Fantastic, because we all have the capacity to pray towards and behalf of others. It means that we can give this little bit, and sometimes it's a lot. The willing to transform other people's lives so they can have the strength to go to overpass, to overcome the obstacle they're, obstacles they're facing at that specific moment. And this is something that cost, costs nothing. But we can all offer, we can all do a small prayer, sincere, with a lot of sincerity, wishing to transform our lives and other people's lives. I guess I already passed the time. Thank you so much. And... Thank you so much.